Hi, this is Mike Hendrickson from Lost City in San Jose. I'm here with Kyle from Oracle Dine. Kyle, how are you doing? Uh, good to see you. Thank you. Good. So last time we talked, I think you were Dine. Yeah. And now you're Oracle Dine. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about what that means and what, what it means to Dine? Yeah, absolutely. So we were acquired by Oracle's cloud infrastructure team, uh, so our IaaS group, uh, in about a year and a half ago. And so we've sort of, our R&D groups have uh, become part of Oracle's cloud infrastructure team focused on the cloud edge and cloud edge services. So the DNS, the traffic management, we also acquired a business called Zen Edge a few months ago that does web application security, web application <coughs> firewall, DDoS protection, bot protection. So we're really rounding out the portfolio of cloud edge services as part of the Oracle cloud infrastructure platform. And you know, a bunch of my function has been to now VP of product strategy for that group, uh, trying to figure out how to continue to accelerate roadmap, um, you know, evangelize our differentiation innovations in the market. Uh, it's been a it's been a fun ride to, so to what, switch it up. <laughs> so what does this mean for Oracle's customers? Like you know, I look at Oracle and I think of working with large enterprises. Yep. You know, and typically databases and financial stuff for enterprises. Yeah. So what do you guys bring to that offering? Yeah, so when we were originally acquired, I think it was a lot for the competency around internet performance, visibility, uh, better traffic management as more workloads were moving from on-premise data centers, captive data centers to the cloud. And every single one of Oracle's customers trying to figure out that transition. And I think the, the beauty of the sort of Oracle customer base uh, is, you know, I think it's, um, uh, the enterprise is still figuring out how to move to the cloud. How to transform. How to They're, transform. Yeah. And you know, we, we think it's somewhere around 10% of enterprise workloads, business applications, systems that run your company, uh, those are the only ones that have moved to cloud. And we also see it as a very hybrid cloud environment. So how do you do this in, in this new world and ensure security, compliance, performance, uh, when it's no longer your data center and your transit relationships and it's the cloud, right? So we're kind of coming in um, and helping provide that visibility, that lens of the public internet, as well as giving more controls and security features uh, to make that transition hopefully easier. So you kind of give the vision in there for people to understand why it's important, but you also help with some of the protection. Yeah, absolutely. And, yeah. So if you think about data, and you think about the database, and you think about uh, the things that Oracle is obviously famous for as it relates to ERP and uh, HR Cloud, I mean, these services are mission critical data sets and uh, are incredibly important to the health and well-being of enterprise businesses. So ensuring that you have visibility and security to protect those services as they hopefully move to the cloud, but also probably remain hybrid and different components and as that sequencing strategy of what things move first to cloud happen. Uh, that's something that we are helping with all the way up to stack, all the way up to applications. And even though it's an infrastructure uh, service mechanism, it's really about moving to cloud holistically uh, across the board. So you gave a very interesting keynote today. Can you talk a little bit about what it was? I mean, the Intel report, Sounds fascinating. Yeah, so. so we launched the Internet Intelligence Map, which is uh, a, a free resource uh, for the market based on about 15 years of uh, internet traffic data that we've been collecting on uh, the performance and availability of the global internet um, provider agnostic, right? So we've been using these services um, first in Dyn and then now in Oracle to really drive um, a third party visibility of how the internet works and you know, these disruptions are affecting you know the enterprise because the internet's becoming a big part of your network. Uh, so that's kind of the connection, the correlation, and we think it's great differentiation for Oracle Cloud because you know we're not a consumer apps company. We don't we don't run an e-commerce website. We're straight enterprise technology. So our ability to sort of democratize these data sets, put them in the hands of our enterprise customers to modernize uh, their their workloads into the cloud uh, gives a nice compelling advantage. And is that map updated regularly or is it yeah. real, real time? Yeah, it's near real time. Uh, we're collecting every 24 seconds. Uh, we're uh, running about 500 million trace routes across the internet um, and collecting data on uh, the performance of the internet. And it, we're doing about, I think it's about 220 billion points of data collection per day that we are uh, bringing together mul multiple, multiple variant lens through so, uh, border gateway protocol, trace data, uh, authoritative and recursive DNS data. Uh, we think we've got the world's best um, map of IP addresses, where they are, who owns them, who runs those portions of the internet. Again, we're just bringing that out to the market to, 
provide value. And this kind of a reference case as well, because you guys are doing this on your own technologies. Yeah, and again, with Dyn, we did this for our DNS networks and for our load balancing services. Uh, Imagine that now rolling into an overall cloud infrastructure platform that helps you, you know, decide where to deploy infrastructure, what regions to use, what services to move over, um, but also bring that all the way up the stack for Oracle, who again is is moving from licensed software of these, you know, fusion apps and e-business suite. All these services are moved from e-business suite to fusion apps, and then you know the acquisition of NetSuite and, and many others in the Oracle Data Cloud, Moat and BlueKai and Data Logics. We're really kind of reinventing Oracle. Uh, again, famous for what it's famous for, and not yep, losing yep. those roots. But you know, how do you kind of bring that story uh, forward for the next forty years of Larry Ellison's life? So, in your journey with Oracle, your your brief what is it? Twelve months? Uh, about about eighteen. Yeah. Eighteen months. What has been the biggest surprise for you? I think the biggest surprise. I mean, I've historically, personally, been a startup guy. Uh, you know, scaling Dyn from 15 engineers to the 500 or so we were when we got sold. You know, you, when you get acquired, you don't really know what it's going to be like. And you know, I think Oracle's done about 130 acquisitions over the last 12 years. So I think I'm pretty good at it. And they've learned a lot from the past. I think what I've been most surprised at is we were acquired by the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure team in Seattle, and I've found that. They've actually given us a tremendous amount of rope to be entrepreneurial and to continue to innovate aggressively. And it's kind of a, I guess it's an advantage to be a second mover in infrastructure as a service, trying to play catch up to some of the other big guys out there um, that were really able to innovate, to differentiate and operate like a startup in the world's, I think it's the 17th most valued brand in the world. Uh, so having that sort of um, brand, you know, and resources behind what we're building and infrastructure for the enterprise, um, but also still being able to operate in a kind of startup mentality has been um, refreshing. And I don't think I don't think many of us at Dyn or ZenEdge, who was acquired after, necessarily knew what the future would hold. But it's been pretty good so far. And are you still in New Hampshire? Yeah, yeah. And that that too, uh, that's been great. They uh, we actually uh, you said you're down in Mass. Um, yeah. We just actually replaced with this massive sign in the Manchester, New Hampshire mill yard, and it was a dying sign, and we just replaced it with a massive red Oracle sign that lights up at night and changed the skyline of my hometown. And and you know our hope is that that's a you know cloud you know uh, employment hub for the next uh, you know couple decades up in New Hampshire. That's a, that's really exciting. So you just looked back for us on, on the acquisition, how it's gone. Can you now look forward and what would you like to see happen in the next 12 months? Yeah, I think um, for us, like I said, our R&D our functions are really focusing on continuing to evolve Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Platform. And a, a lot of our product strategy functions and go-to-market functions are really working with companies that are more cloud native, you know, born in the cloud. It really, the Velocity show is founding, right? Web performance, security, global scale, internet scale, and the complexities that go with that. So I think as, as important as it is for us to solve the Oracle database and Oracle on-premise uh, technologies and software moving to our cloud, what I really like to see us do is accelerate that sort of DevOps, you know, bottoms up, you know, cloud native global scale. Um, those use cases kind of finding Oracle, giving Oracle a try, seeing our price performance improvements, uh, and, and see the, the traction in the market that way. I think that would be that would be that would be a big win for all of us at Oracle. Excellent. Well Kyle, we look forward to that journey. Great, thank, thank you. you for having me.